was welcome news that the 81,000-ton Queen Mary had completed her transformation from troop transport to luxury liner. After an eight-month refit, she was ready again. Her commander, Captain Illingworth, said a word or two just before she set out. Sailing very shortly on the first voyage after reconditioning. And we hope to have a very fine trip and very many successful ones to follow. Queen Mary had a great war record, steaming over half a million miles and safely transporting more than 760,000 servicemen. Her reconversion has been one of the biggest jobs of its kind ever undertaken on a merchant ship. With the two queens on the Atlantic again, Britain has a regular Southampton New York Express passenger service second to none. What's more, we can certainly do with the dollars they learn. When their majesties recently inspected Boy Scouts at Buckingham Palace, they were received by Lord Row Allen, the chief scout. Contingents from all parts of the Commonwealth were on parade, and all of them very smartly turned out. They were on their way to the World Jamboree, which is being held in France. The King and Queen talked with many of these keen representatives of a great movement. Incidentally, this royal engagement was carried out just before the celebration of the Queen's birthday. En route from Chessington to Worthing, 120 seriously wounded ex-servicemen are seen going off in cheery mood for their outing at the seaside. They were taken there by a number of taxi drivers from London and the suburbs who offered their services and cars and subscribed to the cost. It's easy enough to forget in times of peace the many victims of World Wars I and II. Obviously the taxi men have not forgotten and the picture serves as a reminder to us all. Holiday makers on the Isle of Wight had a good view of the new Saunders Row A1 jet propelled flying boat fighter on her trials. Details of the boat include a pressurized cabin for the pilot with emergency ejection device, two powerful jet turbines totally enclosed, and four 20 mm cannon in the nose. Flown by test pilot Geoffrey Tyson, the aircraft, the first of its kind in the world, apparently gave an excellent performance. a flood in China, it usually makes other floods look insignificant, and they've recently had a disastrous one in and around Canton. Our picture gives some idea of the catastrophe, the result of three rivers breaking their banks in this area. Here it's literally all hands to the dike. They've got no other way of doing the job, only the centuries-old method of hard work without help from machinery of any kind. This is a rice field deep under the water. But since every grain of rice is vitally needed in China, they salvage what they can of the crop. The number of people rendered homeless by these floods cannot be counted. It's difficult for us here to grasp the immensity of such disaster. Famine follows swiftly in the wake of the floods, and the government works hard to alleviate the distress. Rice is distributed to some of the victims, and they do look pretty hungry. Aboard HMS Sirius, survivors of the 1942 raid returned to Saint-Nazaire to pay tribute to comrades who fell. The French had erected a memorial in honor of 150 British naval and army officers and men who gave their lives in the raid. Monsieur Amadier, Premier of France, now unveiled the monument, and the plaque for it was laid by a naval gunner and a commando corporal. Many other tributes were placed beside it. Afterwards, Two of the three Saint-Nazaire VCs, Colonel Newman and Commander Ryder, were awarded the Legion of Honor and the Croix de Guerre. Britain had many thousands of tons of chemical warfare ammunition ready in case the enemy started using gas. Now this dangerous stuff is being disposed of. Our picture shows gas shells and containers being loaded aboard the Empire Lark. As the German ship Kirsten Midas, she was a U-boat supply ship 
and was captured near the Canaries. Now, loaded to capacity with about 8,000 tons of the poisonous cargo, she is towed out and escorted by a naval frigate to a selected spot well out of harm's way in the Bay of Biscay. There, the scuttling charges are touched off electrically from a ship at a safe distance, and down she goes. And down with her goes ammunition for a kind of war that wasn't waged and, let's hope, never will be. The 7,000-ton Norwegian ship Ocean Liberty, loaded with a cargo of nitrate, caught fire in Brest Harbour. They began to tow her out, but just as she was passing a gas holder, she blew up. Tremendous damage was done. At least a score of lives were lost, and about a 1,000 people were injured. The shock of the explosion was felt in Britain, so we can imagine what it must have been like near the harbour itself. Brest had been virtually wiped out in the war. Now fate has struck this Brittany port another disastrous blow. At Leeds, the fourth test was already going badly enough for the South Africans, without the addition of one more in the field against them. Yes, it was bad enough. Young, for example, clean bowled Bruce Mitchell for five. And towards the end, Kenneth Cranston did some really deadly work. Fullerton survived a ball that touched his wicket. But Cranston got him soon afterwards. Then he got man, called Evans. And Tuckett bowled. Finally, Smith. Four wickets in a maiden over. It remained for Hutton and Washbrook to knock off the run. The last ball of the match, a full toss from Mann, Hutton hit for six. Souvenir grabbing followed immediately. In the Tourelle swimming pool, Paris, one of the fastest swimmers today wins another race. He's Alex Jani, leading all the way in the 100 metres freestyle during the French National Championships. Watch him make his turn, and watch him sprint back like lightning to the other end of the bath, leaving all competition far behind. Jani also won the 200 and the 400 metres. He covered the 100 in the excellent time of 58.5 seconds. There was magnificent weather at Goodwood on Stewart's Cup Day, and of course there were large holiday crowds there to make the most of it. One gentleman came prepared for anything. Another seemed to have strayed from some cricket ground, but all enjoyed themselves in their own particular fashion. There were 19 runners, with Pandemonium, the popular favourite for this six furlong sprint. In a moment, they'll be off. There was an incident in the first furlong. Ferrum slipped and Sam Rag injured his foot. Then, as the field raced on, it began to look as if Commissar on the rails was going to pull off his second Stewards' Cup. But Gordon Richards had been biding his time on close burn, who'd almost missed the race owing to a traffic jam. Now Gordon rode him through to win, but he only just made it. 